mean, it's actually stunning when you look around. I mean, China has had major flooding in the Guangzhou area. You know, Hong Kong Disneyland uh, got got hammered. But the when you look at the images, I mean, cars floating down the street. You know, mm-hmm. shit. And then it's the it's the same thing in in several places around the world. It's all happened simultaneously. And then you look at the Sunday news shows, and it's all garbage. You know, it's all Trump and all. <laughs> and all I mean, just no. You would think that they would put the cameras on these events, right, and say, "Look, there is something happening here to alert the public." But no, which is to we don't want to do that. Yeah. And have the same politicians on and say, hey, don't you think we should be doing something about this? <laughs> Just a little simple question. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like the it's like the political shows are this dance. They have a they have a well worn path that they kind of stay in. And it's, you know, the elections are horse races and look at what this politician did. And they're being gamed and played all the time by people who come and be, you know, be guests on their show and everybody else. And and they're afraid that, or can't imagine breaking out of the mold and doing something different. It's very weird. Yeah. Well said. Elections are horse racing and wars are sporting events. Right. Commentary is like a sporting event. It's... <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Klaus. Well, anyway, I I did it once our neo book, um, and in inserted uh, the pieces that we that we had discussed. Um, maybe we'll just dig into it. And uh, here is uh, hold on. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. But uh, is this big enough? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we had talked about... Um, sorry, this is... You no, know, so yeah, we had talked about inserting these the a spiral dynamics um, conversation. Right, so we had this page here, and then we said, "So, what is spiral dynamics?" To get uh, to get a better un- to get an understanding of you know, what are we talking about, and I inserted a version of uh, this Don Beck and Christopher Cohen letter here, which I think is the most uh, succinct uh, summary that, that that I could find. Um, are you copy pasting it, or what did you do? I copy paste it and then edit it. Yeah. Okay. Um, which, if we're writing a book, we may not have sort of. Uh, if it were a, if it were a complete summary or a rewrite of it, it would probably make sense. This just pasting and doing some editing might actually not pass muster for for a book. I don't know fully what the what the requirements are for for original content. Despite my saying, let's reuse everything. I, I mostly mean let's reuse stuff that we write. Yeah, no, I get this. Um, yeah. the, the, um, and and there are multiple versions on the net. I just thought this. I mean, I can. Yeah, I mean, there's some copyright issues, obviously, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but for now, I can. I can. Uh, I wanted to put this in because it's just so darn succinct. You know? mm-hmm. And, uh, and and also shorten it, um, but uh, it it the important part here. Each, each V meme leads to certain beliefs, social groupings, motivation patterns, organizational dynamics, and goals. You now, if we try to impose solutions or structures that are too far ahead of the curve, the result is alienation and rebellion rather than transformation. Um, so it's just it's just a very practical, intuitive way of uh, of interacting, you know, with people who are in different modes of reality or different understanding of reality. Um, the uh, you know the intuit better or higher 
uh, modes of being without respecting the stages of change and development that must happen before large numbers of people in an organization or society can enact such a mode. Beck and Cohen avoid the, the, the use of the term better or higher, um, sticking with more complex V memes. There's hierarchy involved, but it's more factual than evaluative. And then he goes into the eight dominant V themes listed below. Um, and he adds, you know, number of people or a share of population and political power. So you have beige and purple, which, you know, in the US is 0.1% of population. It's basically homeless people and um, basic survival instincts. And then purple is 10% of world population, but 1% of power. Um, the, the, uh, um, and then we started really looking at red, which is 20% of world population, but only 5% of power. Um, and then so you come in blue. And so it's laying in examples of how would you identify people within that group. Um, you know, blue is authoritarian, loyal to truth, which is defined by social grouping. Um, blue is now is uh, is now strong. Forty percent of world population, thirty percent of power. You know, they say Billy Graham, Puritan American, Confucian China, Confucius China, well, Islamism, and then orange is the dominant today entrepreneurial personal success orientation. Only thirty percent of the population, but they're fifty percent of power. Um, so that would be where you find Obama and Clinton, for example, you know, is, is in the orange spectrum. And then there is the green, communitarian, sensitive, humanistic, um, Jimmy Carter, John Lennon, Greenpeace, you know, Sierra Club, Doctor Without Borders, um, and then yellow, systemic, first VMEM of the second tier, um, there is a quantum shift in the capacity to take multiple perspectives. Yellow is motivated by learning for its own sake, towards oriented towards the integration of complex systems. Um, so yellow likes you know, challenges and change and, 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 and engineering complex systems, dealing with ideas. And then there's turquoise, um, which is you know, the... Um, uh, as aspirational part. So anyway, it's it's a bit much to get to go through there right now in 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 uh, uh, in in fast forward here. But uh, it's interesting how 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 they have how this spiral dynamic system is looking at consciousness now. It says higher levels emerge like waves at the beach, swelling from insignificance, peaking and dissolving again. Each wave is a bit higher, more complex than the last. Um, but this is not inevitable. Changing life conditions must generate sufficient problems for the predominant world few to be motivated to change. You know, a corporation, for example, might cling to the bedrock of blue while the information economy forces entirely new ways of doing business. So there is this, I think that's the, the uniqueness about our time is that we are dealing with so many, um, so many of these groups all there at the same time. And the, because so many people have more education and more access to information. Um, so you have a more, you have more groupings that are, that are active. Um, at the same time. Okay, so no, that's a lot of stuff. But anyway, um, then they go into examples of uh, um, how we are shifting to a new world view. Um, it's really worthwhile reading, but it's it's too much to fly through there right now. So I put this in here. Um, and it talks about spiral visits. Spiral visitry thinks in terms of open, think in terms of open evolving systems rather than closed final states. So none of these states is in any sense final, they're fluid. 
and people change. People go from one state to another depending on life circumstances. For example, you may have a yellow uh, going into war, turning into a red, right? Because it's survival and um, um, so so they respond to natural natural flows and rhythms and show a chaos. But since they are tuned to the health of the whole spiral, they do not threaten or jeopardize the old. And I think that's really one of our critical, critical challenges when you when you talk with people who are in different in different frames of reference, you not know, to not frustrate someone or um, make people feel you know so uncomfortable by you know the, hearing things they're not familiar with. Um, so, you know, Spiral Wizard creates organizational structures and motivational systems that are appropriate for the individuals involved in the work. They might create public change rituals to honor purple, competitive sports to honor red, bonus and financial perks for orange, celebrations of comedy loyalty to blue. So this is all really basic um, generalities, right? But I think they do they do seem to make sense um the call the call the process they call the process of doing so streaming meaning shifting uh no dealing with multiple colors which involves second tier intelligence creating systems that harness and honor the best skills of each vmem the potential problem is many developmental schemes is that people feel like they've been located at a certain stage of the development spectrum. Their egos are activated in a very negative way by this. So Beck and Cohen do the same thing, but in much gentler ways by saying that a particular VMEM is activated in someone. The extra wedge between person and VMEM is key move to letting these ideas think in. So actually it's important to discuss what is a VMEM. And because V, the little V stands for value structure. And then the meme, of course, is the uh, is the interpretation of the, my world. And in, in I'm, 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 there's this biblical uh, uh, mind picture where the, the tong is like the rudder on a ship. Right? So the V is like the rudder on a ship where it steers into the direction. So the value system that we embrace really, really uh, is is the defining um, tool, or that the, the defines how we perceive, how we absorb information, categorize it, and use it. Um, so how how it fits into into that value structure, and that's actually the unifying force is that V. Uh, across all the colors, because if we have the same, and this is you know, where morality and ethics comes in, if we have the same understanding of what this value system is and should be like, then we can coordinate across across the entire spectrum. So anyway, I so I inserted this letter here, and uh, I don't know what the um, uh, copyright issues are uh, and, and how that would work, Jerry. You have to let me know. But I mean, I can, I can rewrite it, you know, and 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 insert all of this in shorter forms, still. And then, so he said. So I, I don't know what the, the you know, to 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 sip through this here and fast forward is a challenge. But then we we here's where we were last time. Um, the, uh... can, we, can, we, can we pause for a minute um, mm -hmm. and, and actually talk about um, what you just put up? And I've got a few questions. Um, so one, is there a place in the text before this article where you talk about why we're using spiral dynamics as an analytical model? Um, no. you, don't have to you don't have to show it to me. I just, yeah. I just think it's important to create that that context. Yeah, no, I, I think that's the the introduction here. Um, 
the to 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 yeah so it's 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 not as as specific as your question right now but uh, um i mean it's not like it's a paragraph that says that you know but the the introduction here um is really talking about how we are um uh as a as a group living within different types of realities that are based on our cognitive perception of the world around us uh, and 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 the value structures and so on. Okay. This is, a, this is a generic introduction to spiral dynamics. It doesn't say why this is a useful model for the book you're writing, is the question Stuart's asking, I think. Yeah. Well, it's exactly, it, 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 yeah, and um, because I think it's important for a reader to know that, okay? Yeah. Uh, okay, we're, we're looking at this, you know, because um, different segments of the population see this whole field um, in different ways, depending upon where they are on the on the evolutionary scale whatever that means yeah mm -hmm. yeah so so just i just think it's that's that's uh, important um number two as the copyright okay you know, my thoughts are all right um it's often easier to have get forgiveness than permission okay <laughs> and as long as you provide attribution all right my thinking is, you know, why would anybody, why would anybody um, kind of feel badly that you use their work to explain something and you provided attribution, all right? And I, I understand there might be a, quote, technical violation of copyright law, but as a very practical matter, um, you're providing attribution, you're using somebody's work and thesis, you know, even though, quote, it's not um, in the commons, um, or you can, you know, run down the whole permission structure to use the article um, and get and get someone's permission. So yeah. a couple things. Um, this was, this summary appears to have been written by Steve Dynan from Esalen in 1999. And at the bottom of the page, it says copyright 1999 National Value Center. Uh -huh. yeah. So it appears to be a traditionally copywritten uh, piece, which, and anytime, anytime you copy and paste somebody else's full text into a manuscript you are writing, I get, this may sound strange to you because I'm all about open stuff. I get extremely nervous. I do not like it. Um, it, 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 it makes me, so the thing I'm thinking is, this is a great summary. I would point to it in the text as a reference, uh, and I would give a link to the, to the, to the full document and let people go read it if they want to. I would definitely not include it in the text here. And I would create, and even using chat GPT to say, Hey, help me some, you know, using this document as inspiration, create new words that explain how some of these things work. Uh, that would I would be fine with that because we're giving ChatGPT co credit as an author as a co author of this book, which is great. But I'm very leery of including this in full text, even if you've made some changes to it. Th this is somebody else's complete idea. You could also try to find Steve Dynan and say, "Hey, would it be okay if I included this in a neo book and explain the process?" And if Steve says thumbs up and gives approval, you're gold. Then you're good. But yeah. I would not I would not just drop this in. This is yeah. Uh, that th there are there are all sorts of plagiarism cases out there where where reputable and interesting writers got taken to the woodshed because they were taking notes and they were just copy pasting notes into their manuscript and they forgot to completely change some section and then they're hosed. Um, and so I want to I want to kind of honor that aspect of book of book writing in in some sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's the that's the permission piece that I was talking about, Klaus, which is the highest level of 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 use, I think. Mm -hmm. Getting permission from the original author. And mm -hmm. as a reference to, hey, you you know, read up on spiral dynamics by going here works just fine in the text. And then uh, you can include a very short summary and that lets you focus on 
why is spiral dynamics useful here, which is a piece that actually needs to be in the manuscript, as Stuart said. And I was thinking that it, it probably needs to be in the introduction of this of this neo book, and then it probably it needs to be in, in somewhat more detail as you flow into spiral dynamics. Uh, you know, after after the setup, uh, all the earlier stuff that we were talking about. Yeah, we're, we're starting right here at, uh, with the spiral dynamics. What what runs what runs just before the spiral wizard? Yeah, oh. regenerative practices, all that. So skills required for innovations brokerage, awesome. So you're going to have a section on innovation brokerage, love that. So right after this section on innovation brokerage, which wraps that section, I would have an introduction for, hey, in the context of this book, why does spiral dynamics make sense as a solution framework? Yeah. Um, that's that's just missing right now. Yeah, so I can put this in while we're using spiral uh, dynamics. Yes, I would not put it in the middle of the text that I'm not happy about using here is all. Like you No, no I, I I can completely okay. you know, take that out. I, uh, I would just I would just put the why are we using spiral dynamics just before the title of the summary of spiral dynamics so that you know that everything you write here is new and clear and different. Yeah, I would just yeah. move it above. That's that's yeah, and, and absent permission, that summary is just a link. Yeah, so I I would so so now that like like a section that explains this would be terrific because then you're gluing the whole first half of the book to the second half of the book is my perception it, because I think that that that's you know you're using spiral dynamics as the operational model for getting out there and changing discourse with different uh, constituencies and all that terrific and then yeah. that's going to work really well yeah and and uh, and Jerry said something that's important I think for punctuation at the very beginning of the article, the introduction slash summary, okay, of some kind where you're luring people in to say that we use spiral, we're using spiral dynamics as a, an analytical model because whatever the because, whatever the because is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the introduction to the whole, this whole book needs to uh, show the flow between the the opening sections and spiral dynamics. Uh, but then right here, the section that you're writing, that you're sort of starting right now, is then that idea in more uh, in more detail. So let me see. I need to put this away yep. so I can get. Yeah, is there an, uh, an intro right now? So there is the story of soil. Is what in this this is ChatGPT three point five, mm -hmm. um, and then so it goes really into the dawn of Homo sapien and industrial agriculture, the age of regeneration. So food revolt, why we need to revolt, um, and uh, bioregions. Now this whole concept of bioregions, culture and traditions. Uh, the impact of industrial agriculture, then comes the regenerative movement, the path to a regenerative future, the role of large-scale multinational companies, the role of innovations brokerage in supporting a community-based community regenerative transition, the skills required for innovations brokerage, um, and then comes the spiral visit. You know, so now we're going into uh, into interacting with, you know, wh what what do we need to do within our human organization to make these changes actually happen? You know, and then we can say, so here, why are we using spiral dynamics as an analytical model? Um, and uh, and what is it? Um, good. So, okay, so I, I think. Go ahead, Stuart. No, I was going to say, Klaus, could you answer that question right now? Just say, just say it out loud. Why why are you using spiral dynamics? So the the um, they have, we have made attempts to create segmentation strategies that help us understand how to communicate more effectively with people without making them defensive, with uh, without running into beliefs and barriers. And there's a whole lot of that out there, but I find that in the political spectrum and in the social system spectrum, uh, spiral dynamics is the most effective way of creating these distinctions. Um, 
you know, in, in using these colors, but I mean, you could you now call it one, two, three, whatever, but just for illustration purposes, using these colors um, shows a, you know, a, a, a segmentation that just rings good on a common sense level. You know, you just, you just uh, intuitively accept that people live in these types of worlds and realities and you can uh, you can assign you know, segments of the population to specific colors and that in turn truly helps to understand that each one of these groupings is really speaking a unique language and if you want to reach them then you have to adapt you know their their vocabulary and their symbolism you know, and the other and the the um uh, examples they're using for sense making. Uh, okay, so just um, to summarize, okay, in some sense, um, you're writing an advocacy piece as to why it's so important that we pay attention um, to regenerative agriculture at this moment in time. And um, what that involves is um, convincing broader levels of the population how important it is. And yeah. when people are being advocates in that way, they need to be aware of who their audience is, who they're, who they're, who they're talking to, to be effective. Um, I, and I assume that in some ways that's based upon, you know, your own experience knocking your head up against the walls with people who, who who weren't hearing what you had to say because you weren't realizing who exactly they were and what their level of of awareness was or something something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and it's like it's one thing to know uh, and 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 understand this. It's a completely different thing to practice it, you mm -hmm. know, uh, because you're stumbling across your own emotional spectrum. So I, I think I think it's an underlying assumption. One, I think one of the underlying assumptions behind why spiral dynamics is a good idea here is that one message or one story won't bring everybody on board for the size or scale of change we need. And so we need to adapt the story and the logics for different groups. And hey, here's a really interesting model that says um, you need to talk differently to people who think this way, this way, this way, this way, and then here we go. And then you're off and running, and then you ask ChatGPT to generate specifics for each of those, and that's the end of your book. And then you do a little a conclusion that says that says whatever. Um, I, like that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, we are we are missing an introduction to the book. There, there, there's no introduction here, and and we need to generate something that encapsulates the whole book in five paragraphs. The whole book, meaning here's why we're going to go. And and because you start with the, the beginning of the dawn of Homo sapiens, that's that's actually the beginning beginning of the book, of the of the writing of the book. And that's not a summary of what the book is going to be about. So an introduction up front needs to say in, in, as briskly and, and quickly and convincingly and alluringly as possible. Here's the problem. And here's here's how we're going to go about uh, addressing it or solving it. Uh, yeah, and 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 soil is the cradle of life is is the start of your book. I like. I think the introduction is more uh, something about we are busy destroying our planet, or you know, uh, however however you want to sort of say that things are not that great and they're, they're fixed, but they're fixable. And we hear you know this book contains some of the pieces of how to fix it, uh, including some of the details of how to convince people to use the tools that are already available. To fix this, something like that. Uh, Stuart, you've written lots of books. I, um, I'm I'm a book new, book virgin still. So yeah, I mean, to me, one of the most you know important and critical things is um, providing good context in an introduction before you get into the weeds, so that people's brain is organized and they have a a, a big bucket. In which to put all of these wonderful details that you're that you're you know that you're you're aware of. So so in this context, um, you know that's essential for two things: one, the facts about regenerative farming, and two, 
the whole use of um, of spiral dynamics as an analytical model for being a more effective advocate. Boss, is that making sense? Yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to translate that into sort of a headline. Yeah, part mm -hmm. of that in some ways comes from, believe it or not, aside from the writing experience, um, do you remember teach? You remember Evelyn Wood reading dynamics? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, it, it's a me it was a methodology, Klaus. It was called reading dynamics or speed reading, but it really was a way to process large amounts of information in a very methodical way. And and one of the critical principles was um, as you're reading to give your your brain the context in which you're dumping facts in you know yeah, yeah, individual yeah. pieces of information okay mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah i i, I can put you know, an introduction ahead of uh of uh of this thing here okay the other the other thing about being an effective advocate and i think we talked about this in the ogm call um and when you want to persuade, um, so a good story um, or poem, something that's emotional that grabs people, aside from the the you know the logic of everything that you say, which I assume is you know in in the detail of all the material that it's logic, but but some kind of a a story. Um, to grab people's hearts because yeah. people, people are moved to action by emotion. Mm -hmm. So oh. I did. Um, hold on. So I did um, end something like here where I asked Chat GPT, given current trend lines, how humanity is evolving and impacting nature. What are the impacts in both the biosphere and the social systems? Where are these impacts trending? What is the five to 10 year outlook if humanity does not change course? Mm -hmm. And then it goes, the current trajectory of human impact on the environment is creating a ripple effect of consequences affecting both the biosphere and social systems. If not mitigated within the next five to 10 years, these impacts could lead to irreversible damage and create an array of challenges for human civilization. So the, in the biosphere, we deal with soil degradation, water pollution and scarcity, biodiversity. Uh, loss. Yeah, okay. So that's good. But I think that also needs, um, <laughs> that you need to validate the use of chat GPT as a, as a, as a, as a good source of information in this area. Well, I think that this summary is I think the summary is very reasonable and it yeah. could be it could be like in an intro. Um it seems it seems okay. You might also just say, hey, you may be tired by now of hearing how much the earth is suffering and how much human life on the planet is endangered. Um I I share your exhaustion or your pain or whatever. Um this book is about trying to fix that. And yeah. in, in, and in or and and that's it. And, and not to enumerate or summarize all the different ways that shit's breaking, which that was a very nice, well, the, the piece you just showed us, showed us is a nice summary. Like the bio, the biosphere is breaking these ways, social systems breaking these ways, human life is endangered. I get that. But, but in some sense, um, I'd love for you to say this book is full of positive things we could do um, to fix those problems and get right straight into that. And in order to, in order for you to understand, in order for you, the reader, to sort of understand, we need to frame this in a couple of ways. First, we need to frame historically what have humans done. Second, we need to think about frameworks. Uh, and I'm making this up. Uh, bio, why bioregions matter? Why why regeneration matters? And then uh, a couple of implementation issues, uh, which then culminate with how do you explain this body of stuff to everybody? And we're going to use spiral dynamics as a as a, a framework for varying the same explanation, uh, but for different kinds of audiences who are coming at this uh, in very different spirits and values and ways, something like that. So that's maybe more like of an like an abstract. 
uh, yes yes yeah yes and 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 the abstract need, needs to be enticing because the introduction is what people turn to to decide do i want to read this thing or not yeah um and so being a little bit humorous a little bit uh punchy a little bit whatever is good is good in the uh in the intro and by the way we're keeping a transcript of this call so if you want to scroll back and take a, a piece of what i just said and feed it to chat gpt and elaborate that that would work that would work yeah so um so I'm, I'm jumping around let me just uh get back to where we left off last time so we mm -hmm. did uh uh you know engaging the general public and uh what you know, what different colors are doing with this thing, and then we talked about let's go and uh, and ask a very specific question, and we we talked about just using red, blue, and orange to do that. Mm -hmm. But when I started to get into it, you realized I really had to do each color. How come? Uh, because they are so uniquely different. Uh, and but it, but it's but it's. But if part of the theory says that very few people live in beige right now, why do you need to do beige? Because it's still you still have a few million homeless people living in the streets of America, and so what are you going to do with them? You know, and so the 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 uh, uh, I, I was doing red, and when when I when I was doing red, I realized that you know that's that's just too specific uh, to just focus on those three. So why not just no, to the whole range. So partly, I think to do, I think there's an 80 20 rule that's possible here. I, I'm, I'm arguing for narrowing down and not doing all the colors, not because I, I, I'm like, like, know that that's going to be the best way, just to make that argument so that we can think it through. Um, and so if red, blue, orange deal are, are, would basically address 70% of American citizens. Mm. That's good enough for me. And you don't need to get to every segment because the more colors you layer in, the more distracting, the more time it's going to take, the more differences, the more it just uh, it dis it uh, uh, distributes your effort. Uh, what's the word? Um, uh, sort of Dilute. uh, yeah, dilutes. Thank you. The more it dilutes your effort and your message. Um, so if, if you could only pick three colors to focus on, I think you've got the right ones in attention and I think there's a price to pay for every other color you add back into the mix, even though you say up front, hey, here are all the colors of the model. Here's how the here's how the colors are different. Go read this essay if you want to understand the whole model. We're going to pick a subset of them because that's where the real energy, that's where the real change energy could lie. Is that well, I would really like that? for you to read this so first before we yeah. before we come to that conclusion okay because, because i found valid reasons to to be inclusive here gotcha um i mean for one for one for one i mean food you know is universal you need to feed the entire population and uh and there, there were some really startling observations that because the individual colors are like so different mm -hmm. uh, i think they will they will jump out cool so I said, write an 800 word essay about what the world looks like to an individual living in the V meme zone of color, mm -hmm. considering the information this group has access to and knows to process. What are they thinking? Who are their thought leaders operating at a higher level of consciousness? And what are the motivations of these thought leaders for engaging with V meme color? What is the most recent state of cognitive dissonance caused by the divergence? of talking about climate change versus observe, observing it in real life. Yeah. And so, and, and then also I'm, I'm going through multiple iterations of asking the question, you know, mm -hmm. I ask, trim this down or change this and so on. Mm -hmm. So when you look here for, a, for an individual living in beige VMEM, the world is a simple, immediate place. Life's revolves around the basics, food, water, shelter, safety. The present moment is all that matters. Beige consciousness is driven by instinct and focused on survival. Complexity is not just ignored, it's not even perceived. Climate change, geopolitics, social justice issues are generally beyond the realm of immediate concern unless they directly affect their survival. Information processing is rudimentary and visceral. The senses and immediate physical needs dominate their perception. If it's not edible, if it can't be used for shelter, 
or, or if it doesn't pose an immediate threat, it's probably irrelevant. Such a view could be seen in certain segments of the homeless population, in communities devastated by natural disasters, or in extreme poverty-stricken areas where survival trumps all other concerns. As for thought leaders, the beige VMEM does not look up to thought leaders in the conventional sense. Leadership in these environments is usually based on direct utility. Can this person find food, protect the group, or build shelter? The motivations for these operating at higher levels of consciousness when engaging with space are often altruistic or derived from a sense of shared humanity. People operating in higher v memes like green or yellow might seek to provide immediate aid, not because they expect beige individuals to move up in their thinking, but to ensure their basic needs are met. So these higher consciousness individuals might find engaging with beige challenging, particularly if their motivations are grounded in more complex ethical or systemic frameworks. How do you explain the nuances of climate change to someone whose immediate concern is where the next meal is coming from? So that's that's sort of the regarding cognitive dissonance and climate change. The concept may not even apply to beige. Cognitive dissonance requires a certain level of mental complexity and the ability to hold conflicting ideas. So I'm what I'm hearing from this description, which is a useful and interesting description, is that there's little sense right now in trying to address beige with these abstract issues. Very little sense. That's correct. But at the same time, in order to find any solutions. You know, you have individuals here that are just helpless, basically, and you need to stabilize the environment, you know, and so you need to really think through how can that work? Well, they would be they would be major important clients of a set of solutions in the system. Right. But they're not part, I think, of your attempt to address the issue in ways that will will engage a bunch of people to change their behaviors and to join a movement. So so. So I think that beige is not uh, a, a, an audience you want to address. Beige is a client that everybody else wants to serve. And may not be aware of having to serve. I'm, I, you know, everybody's aware of uh, climate refugees and people in refugee camps and homelessness. Like there's, there's lots and lots. There's so many of those people around and there's so many efforts to try to patch those problems that I think that there's a, there's a general broad awareness. I don't know. I, I, I'm, so I, I, I think that most of the description you just read basically says uh, these people are not thinking that like anybody who's a, a thought leader is not going to be engaging with them. Anybody who's got uh, any abstractions is not that's not going to work. I, I got a lot of like, hey, don't these people need like immediate succor uh, and, and help. And, you know, if you can get that to them, great. But that's not the thesis of the thesis of of the book, I think, is how do we change the system? so that the system can better generate the things that beige people need. But but the beige people aren't, aren't I don't think, in your immediate first degree audience of interest. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I do see that different because when you live in San Francisco and you stumble over homeless people everywhere you go, you know, you, you're desperately wanting to find a solution for this. And so what does that look like? Exactly, and, th and that spirals into a whole bunch of issues, including addiction, and a bunch of other things. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of these people are PhDs who got unemployed or had a divorce or had a medical episode that made them bankrupt. So they ended up on the street and then they ended up addicted and they can't find their way out. But I don't think this book is going to help address those problems. No. no. It's, I, don't, I don't think it's meant to. No. Because you can't, <laughs> you can't, touch everything and can't work. solve every problem yeah in but one but, in so, one book or paper exactly <laughs> so it feels like that's kind of out of scope klaus and i'm trying to figure out how to trim things that aren't like laser focused so that this book doesn't get too big it's not too big yet it's not that big yet um but how do you how do you make this like a laser focused book that just goes from this and this plus this plus this equals solution set and then here's how we communicate solution set to people who are very different from each other that and that logically makes a whole bunch of sense to me. Yeah. Um, so so if I look at myself as a designer, right, as a systems designer, 
you couldn't design a food system without uh, incorporating uh, these colors into it. It just doesn't work. You know, you have to make uh, provisions um, that find, uh, you just have to be aware of it. I mean, this is just meant to be raising the awareness that you may have to build kibbutz, you know, intentional communities. You may have to find some solutions to provide food and shelter to these groups, you know, and, and guess what they are, this is how they work and this is how you have to interact with them. So if you, so I'm writing the book from a yellow perspective. Now, so if you are in yellow, and you want to stabilize the spiral, you know, to 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 change its footprint mm -hmm. and its relationship with the natural world, you can't omit beige because it's a crucial factor in there. So it has to be upfront, right, and immediate in your design decisions uh, to to build something coherent. Now, so so anyway, let's if we go to red here. Um, Living in the v zone of red, the world seems like a stark battleground for power and survival. You know, the people in operating in this zone are not primarily concerned with global issues like climate change, but they are instead focused on immediate needs and gratifications. They see the world through a lens that places them at the center where emotions run high and impulses dictate action. Um, relationships are transactional. You know? Um, so given the immediate nature of their concerns, food, security, respect, red individuals are less likely to tune into the mainstream media for complex geopolitical or scientific analysis. Their information often comes from localized sources, community leaders, strong parental figures, influential peers who operate on similar wavelengths, but may possess a slightly higher level of consciousness. The more enlightened among these leaders, perhaps operating in the blue or even orange VMAMs, may employ red language and perspectives to enact change or maintain order. Mm -hmm. um, why would such thought leaders engage with red individuals? The motivations can vary. Uh, are the sense of duty or moral obligation, using religion or law to instill a semblance of orders? Thought leaders in the orange VMAM may see potential for mobilizing red individuals for mutual gain. Um, concept of cognitive dissonance, particularly regarding climate change, doesn't often infiltrate, infiltrate the red world view deeply because the abstract and future-oriented nature of climate issues doesn't resonate with their immediate concerns. However, when observable phenomena like extreme weather events directly impact the environment and safety, a form of cognitive dissonance can occur. So, for example, water is, is a much better metaphor for communicating with red about uh, about environmental issues than there would be this extract this, this abstract notion of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, and then conversations in blue. Um, people at this stage have moved beyond the impulsiveness and power struggles that dominated. The red VMAM, uh, blue mind, places faith in the establishment and often looks to authority figures for guidance and validation. Um, so, so there, um, when it comes to issues of climate change, cognitive dissonance for those in the blue VMAM can be significant. On one hand, they are receiving information from trusted sources like the Pope speaking on the need for environmental stewardship uh, that prompts them to consider the issue seriously. On the other hand, the effects of climate change might directly contradict their longstanding beliefs in a just world governed by a higher power or reliable institution. Um, for it now, so so the, uh, such dissonance can be catalyst for deeper questioning or compartmentalization. Um, so it's just, again, a completely different language here. In summary, to an individual operating in the blue V meme, the world is a structured, predictable space defined by traditions and moral codes. They look so, to establish- so red, and this, red, red, blue, and orange are the three that you said originally were the most relevant, right? So we're in red and we're yeah. heading, we're in blue. Yeah. It's blue now, yeah. Red, red heading to blue, yeah. And, and all of these need to be summarized, class. 
they they need to be summarized and and succinct i think in the text how do you mean uh, more le less fewer words than these no 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 each of the different colors okay and mm -hmm. their at and their attributes um yeah, there should be an introduction to the spiral dynamics model, which was the the, the picture up above, uh, yeah. the spiral yeah. wizard. So where the spiral wizard lives, that's an intro to the model. So right. here, for example, you have that. Yeah. Here's like like clue, authoritarian, loyal to truth, which is defined by social grouping, yep. purposeful, patriotic, leads people to obey authority, feel guilty when not conforming to group norms. So here is you know, you have that, and then you have examples. Organizational structures, pyramidal, boy and girl scouts, Billy Graham, Puritan American, Confucian China, you know, Islamic fundamentalism, 40% of the world. So there, there is that part. So down here is then the translation of, uh, you know, how does this play now? And the, the particular question that I was asking is, is, um, now, what are the what are they experiencing in terms of cognitive dissonance? What uh, what kind of information sources do they have access to? Um, who are their thought leaders, and what is the motivation of their thought leaders? Mm -hmm. And and the piece I don't know if you've done this yet, but the piece that I thought you could get to in this book is, and you could ask ChatGPT to to generate these. Um, you know, write write a message directed to red, blue, orange, whoever, um, in their language, like, like, here, here's what a, such a message could look like. And then, yeah. and then there's, there's actually text that's addressed to that, to that kind of person. Right. Um, yeah. So that would, that's, I started thinking about this when I got into conversation, hold on, when I got into visions of the future. Uh -huh. Now, and, and so I don't want to jump all over the place here, but uh, so, so that's where I was thinking, but, uh, but, but let me let me come to that in just a second. Okay. Because I think orange is interesting because orange is the most power, you know. Uh, orange is holding like 40, 50% of all power. That's where hedge funds are, bankers, you know, corporate uh, leaders. Um, so for individuals resonating within the orange meme, the world is a landscape of opportunities waiting to be explored and exploited. Uh, this paradigm fosters a strategic, achievement-oriented outlook where the goals are personal success, autonomy, uh, and material prosperity. Um, the information sources are everywhere. You know? um, the the, the uh, so thought leaders that attract orange individuals often operate from green, yellow, or even to a grass memes because these are this is the group that gets stuff done. Uh, they, uh, these are the systems thinkers and and so on. Um, motivation for higher VMAMS leaders to engage with Orange is often about systemic transformation. So basically, if we want to to uh, find uh, people to really move stuff, then it would be within Orange. Mm -hmm. uh, recognizing recognizing Orange's considerable influence in realms like business, politics, and innovation. These leaders aim to steer this creative but sometimes self-centered energy toward more holistic, sustainable outcomes. This isn't necessarily altruistic. Guiding Orange towards more complex modes of thought is often seen as a necessary step for tackling global challenges like poverty, social inequality, and climate change. Um, speaking of climate change, this is a domain where Orange experiences significant cognitive dissonance. Uh, on the on the one hand, the irrefutable scientific data and emerging market trends uh, around sustainability and green technology are hard to ignore. Uh, on the other hand, the immediate financial gains from exploiting natural resources, for example, present a compelling incentive that clashes with long-term sustainable thinking. This dissonance has become especially poignant in recent times. Now. Um, so yeah, in, in Orange VMAM view the world as a competitive arena full of opportunities for personal success and advancement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then I get into you know, green and yellow. Now yellow is of course, uh, 
uh, you know, individuals consume a wide, wide range of information uh, from uh, um, so for those in the yellow VMIM, cognitive dissonance and around climate change arises not so much from the gap between knowledge and reality. They're usually keenly aware you know, of the ecological situation. Their dissonance lies more in the gap between what they know is possible, a, a more harmonious, sustainable way of living, and the inertia of existing societal systems, particularly those stuck in the orange and blue VMIMs. Klaus, who's the audience for the book? So um, I would say yellow. Yeah, you, 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 you uh, uh, because I think there's there are a great deal of yellow uh, uh, of people live, living in a yellow frame of reference who don't have the technical information and details of this. And but these are also the groups that that have the capacity to develop com communication structures and engagement uh, ideas for for this uh, uh, to engage with the spiral but you, it, but then you have to you have to know the differences between when you're talking with an orange what motivates an orange versus a blue you know or or, or a red uh, uh, so on or but then also beige right uh, you just have to you, you just have to be conscious you know, of of different frames of reference and this is particularly true when you're dealing with food you now because it's the it's the base of the of the pyramid of needs yeah i mean it's what's 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 interesting to me and it keeps popping up in my mind is um my own personal experience and i think this is a a great story okay with all my analytical ability and identifying 30 plus areas of shit that's wrong in the world what's the foundational thing that i missed food because it is so fucking transparent you know you go to the supermarket and you buy food even somebody who is you know quote so ostensibly aware of phenomenon that's going on i completely missed it and it's just so fucking fundamental I mean, to me you know not because i need to be included in the book, but it's. I, I think that's a that's a, a useful story um, in terms of engaging, you know, engaging people because it's just it's just so transparent and it's so foundational. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and and I think what I sort of see um, between the lines here is um, that. You can you can get you can't move people by more than what what they're arguing by then more like half a line. I Meaning you can't move an orange into yellow, but you can move an orange to think in yellow. You know, so so they have this uh, like there is orange is is the is is in big letters and then yellow would be in small letters. So there is an abstraction that is possible for for folks in different. In, in different uh, uh, environments uh, to to reach forward, right? And so so yellow has uh, it's just the basic idea of living in harmony with people who are in different places than you are. I mean that's a yellow way of, of thinking. You know? and so what does it take to to achieve that? You know? um, Cool. Um, and so yellow and and is it turquoise now or is it teal? Because I always I always thought it was teal at the top. Turquoise, yeah. All right. Yeah. So here's turquoise. Um, the world is perceived as a holistic, interconnected web where systems within systems coexist, giving rise to a bigger picture that transcends individual components. The focus is not merely on the complexity of systems, but on the harmonious integration of systems. The world is a plant of spiritual essence and empirical reality. Everything is connected and every action 
ripples through the universe. Yeah. Turquoise thinkers consume a vast array of information from quantum physics to mystical text to comprehend the universe's true essence. Thought leaders who resonate with those that turquoise women are often hard to pin down as their work transcends conventional categories. So he's mentioned like Ken Wilber comes to mind. Um, spiritual leaders who talk about consciousness and interconnectedness in empirically grounded terms. Their motivation for engaging with Red or any other VMAM for that matter is often altruistic and guided by a sense of responsibility to elevate the collective consciousness. In Red, they see the raw energy and the will to power, which, if guided, could be transformed into a force for positive change. So the cognitive dissonance for someone in Turquoise is concerning climate change is both profound and paradoxically subtle. It's profound because they can perceive the deep-rooted interconnectedness that others might miss. They don't just see deforestation as the loss of trees, but as a spiritual and existential wound that impacts the collective soul of the planet. The dissonance is also subtle because they possess an innate ability to hold multiple perspectives simultaneously without judgment. This means while they're acutely aware of the lack of action, they also understand the systemic and spiritual inertia that keeps things from changing quickly. Cool. And so each of these, I like the analysis from ChatGPT of each of these colors applied to this the problem at hand. And, and the, the piece that I would love to see is a cap for each of the colors that you want to address. And I, I, again, I'm going to say, I, I don't know that you need to address all the colors. Um, although maybe that, that's the just the form of the book and that'd be fine. Um, is what would a message look like that would work for that audience? So the, the, um, um, the transition from, from, uh, colors to, um, to yellow, you know, it's all where it's, where I'll be, hold on. Let me get back to this thing here. Sorry. I don't mean to make you dizzy, but here is the shift to second tier thinking. And I think the conclusion we should, we should, uh, attempt to to create perspectives from within the second tier, right? Because the 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 idea here now is how do you develop a communication strategy that is that is sufficiently differentiated to address unique colors, and you have to look at this out of the yellow tier, even to across tier. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that we know what a second tier means here. It's not the colors. It's second tier is some a different. It's a different segmentation of the spiral levels. Yeah, let me let me go to the uh, um, let me go to this here: orange, green, yellow. This is the first VMAM of the second tier in which there is a quantum shift in the capacity to take multiple perspectives in life. Yellow is motivated by learning for its own sake and is oriented towards integration of complex systems. Change is a welcome part of the process. Yellow likes the challenge. Um, yellow likes engineering complex systems, dealing with ideas. It's also ecologically oriented. Um, um, yellow thinkers often work on the periphery of organizations, quietly fine-tuning situations and procedures much to the bafflement of the first tier V memes. Mm -hmm. um, Hawkins' brief history of time, chaos theory, eco-industrial parks, Wired magazine, that sort of thing. So um, mm -hmm. and then Turquoise, of course, you know, is is uh, uh, jumping into a spiritual aspect of uh, of systems thinking. I'm, I'm, 
I'm 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 feeling challenged in the sense that I, I'm I'm concerned that people are going to get lost in the spiral dynamics model, um, as opposed to the real message of the book about regenerative agriculture. I, I I'm just concerned, mm -hmm. and just it's just something to think about as a as an author, as a, you know, as a writer. And I have to also admit that I have a, a negative bias towards all systems that ex explain human behavior and categorize them. It's just my own because I think we're just too complex. Uh, and, and so when I see someone who hears the way, you know, humans are, I, I get a little, I'll, you know, it, it, it's bothersome to me. All right. It doesn't it doesn't go in so readily that, you know, that's a personal predilection of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I, I share some of your discomfort, Stuart. And I think the goal here from like a, a high level perspective is that this book will appeal to people who are who uh, understand and are into spiral dynamics and would like to see it applied to world problems. And that that that's kind of a, a, a big that is a big piece of the audience for this book. Uh, because we're going to apply spiral dynamics uh, as a as a solution framework to these issues. Um, so that kind of dictates where we are. The reason I keep bringing up, um, I would love to see what ChatGPT GPT would actually write in copy for each of those groups, is that is that uh, you just voiced why that's important to me, Stuart, which is I think that will tie back all the stuff about... Uh, uh, the innovation brokers and taking care of the land and regenerative principles and all of that. I think those get folded right back into the 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 copy that goes to each of the different colors that you want to address. And it makes a nice bow at the end of the document to say, okay, we made a big we made a big detour to explain spiral dynamics, unpack spiral dynamics around these issues for you know each of the colors. But then here's how you apply it, and here's you know here's it's almost like here's next steps starter. Start communication strategies from these uh, blocks of content. So we did start this here. Um, where wait, hold on, mm -hmm. where it was food as a cultural element, um, and then so we we did go into sorry. Mm -hmm. This is ringing a bell. Yes, you know, energy efficiency and so on. So food as a cultural element, the relationship between food and culture. You know, so how does that, uh, how, how do you know, society, civilizations adjust? There is this top-down, bottom-up, you know, mixed uh, mm -hmm. thing there. And then it's uh, communicating insights in the course of action throughout the spiral. So we had this here. The interplay of morality and selfishness so common in the history of our species is particularly interesting when applied to the current food crisis. You know, given these parameters, our evolutionary selfish traits as species you know, that also trail within us. So there is the community engagement again. Um, and then make cultural, uh, uh, and then engaging the general public. And that's when we went into <laughs> the color, right? Mm -hmm. um and so and, and so this is just like a really short you know uh, uh, uh snapshot of of how would you create i mean high high level of communication strategy here like in blue faith based initiatives promoting stewardship of the earth you know in mm -hmm. red you would go celebrity endorsement of sustainable food brands appealing to prestige and individuality in orange corporate wellness programs incentivizing healthy sustainable food choices so we did have you know we touched on that i think the book is getting like big enough to where where you can get lost <laughs> you must be writing it um and then so it's it's you know then then we saw talking in color so out of that you know in the last meeting came uh jerry you were saying okay why don't we just write like a 800 word summary mm -hmm. you know for each color that goes into into more uh, of a descriptive uh, 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 uh detail there so that's when we got this here 
Right. Uh, and, and so this is this is an analytic summary looking at the audience. The thing I'm I'm trying to figure out, which is hinted at in the thing you just showed us in the last little segments, which is start a religious movement to show the interplay, you know, blah, 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 um, is unpacking that into some text so, yeah. that, so that you could then say, and here is a message you would say, here is who you want to, you want to send this to Bible schools, like like the play that people wanted to do, right? You, you want, here here is a couple audiences that would really work, and here is the content of the message for them as an example. Uh, because then you're actually addressing those groups. You're not talking about them. Yeah. So we could spin that out um, yeah. um, as a next step. Yes. So I, and and so I just partly named this because I was running out of steam uh, to to you know, to take this forward. But so I was mm -hmm. just saying. So what are the visions of the future? And so here is what I placed into chat GPT, we have only dim memories of living with nature, sharing the cycles of the seasons and living with her bounties she willingly gives. What has emerged is a dystopian landscape in places most people don't often see, only hear occasionally about. The deaths of pollinators, watersheds that are too polluted for recreational use, strange weather patterns, droughts, floods, storms. A danger is brewing, an anger, a storm. And then I'm asking Chad GPT, so use the opinion expressed above to write an essay of the dangers that lie ahead for humanity, threatening the survival of our civilization. And so this is what Chad GPT wrote. Hmm. Lyrical. Um... I'm I'm going to have to drop off a call pretty soon. I've got um, something that needs to get done right now, at so uh, 15 minutes before our actual end. And I'm happy to leave you guys talking if you want, or we could uh, wrap the call also. Um, but it feels like Klaus, there's a bunch of things you know for next week. Yeah. So I'm I, I stopped with trend lines, um, sim and so it's simply saying. The trend lines are not good. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically saying these impacts could lead to irreversible damage and create an array of challenges for human civilization. And then so so we could go back into um communications, a communications plan by color, something of that sort. Yeah. 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 So um yeah. And I have another question. Um, and I agree with Jerry. I think we've raised a lot of a lot of a lot of questions here to think about. Um, is this editorial process working for you, Klaus? And I don't know if 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 we had a a system of editorial process uh, or you guys are just kind of jumping in. Mm hmm. In other words, are you leaving these sessions with clarity about, aha, I need to do X, Y, and Z, or um, is it is it working? Mm -hmm. Well, it's working in a sense that we have been expanding um, with based on your very specific questions. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we got to the introduction of uh, spiral dynamics, and uh, so I copied this over because it's the best text that I could see. And I, I'm not sure that ChatGPT would even match this because there's just so much specificity in, in summarizing these the, uh, the, the, this content, but we can rewrite it now. But, uh, and, then, and then we went, I think these 800 word essays about specific colors are really powerful um, because it really, it, it, it really defines you know, the distinction uh, and when you can test it, you know, when you, I mean, I was at the party uh, a couple of days ago and uh, you just talk with different people and you can just see their colors jump at you, you know, in, in the way that the, the words they use and the references they make and so on. So uh, there, there is, I think there is great validity in 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 this. And this is, I've always been, you know, Maya Briggs and all this stuff, I've always been like deeply deeply suspicious and, and disengaged from any of that stuff. But this is the first time where, where 
uh, it sort of makes sense because it's it's uh, it just creates like the environment, not the person itself, but the environment that this person perceives. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, so I mean, I, I I do find I do find this helpful. I think um, this is now there is now so much in place. Um, I have to reread it myself to know mm -hmm. where I'm at. So let know? me. Can I make a suggestion? Can you drop the screen for a second? I'll share my screen and show you something. Um, cool, thanks. So I'm in the document over here, and I've started. I turned on the outline. What you do is the little the little bars up here. Just click on that, and yeah. then and then I'm I'm applying uh, different headings to the different sections and subsections, which then lets you see it. Part of the problem is that uh, when it pastes in text. It's pasting it in as if it were, um, so here's more text. Oh, good, this is normal text. That's as it should be. So here's uh, Dawn of Homo sapiens, industrial agriculture. You can make this uh, heading two, uh, and it might be a heading three. I don't know. But as you, as, you, as you do the headings and subheadings to the right level, you will see the book show up here as an outline, and then you can navigate by just clicking on the different sections, and it takes you to that section. It's much faster. And this gives you a, a pretty sort of chapter headings, et cetera. Then you can see if there's duplications, whatever. It's much easier than once the document gets large, you're scrolling up and down and it takes a long time and you start to forget what's where. So that's right. a, that'll probably help. You know what? I haven't landed on this yet. So I have oh. to. <laughs> oh, totally. Just, just, uh, and I'm making suggestions here. So just approve my suggestions and then uh, go crazy yourself. So food revolt might be. Uh, the second first heading, I don't know, you'll figure it out, but see if you do first heading, it comes out to the left. Now, since the dawn of time, if I go down here, this appears to be a title. It should not be a title. This should be normal text. So anywhere you see a block of text that says title, that's bad. And now you see that it went away from over here. So under food revolt, why do we need to revolt? Uh, just look at what the, what the style is up here. And any block of text should just be normal text. Now, any heading or subhead should be at a certain level of indent, and you can change that. Uh, but for example, here, why are we using spiral dynamics? Uh, this has shown up as a heading three, which it probably doesn't need to do, but I'm not going to mess with that one. Let's go. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay, so it's 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 busy interpreting all, each of these things as headings. Uh, Beck and Cowan, this, all of this text is heading three when it should just be normal text. There we go. So now it. That, that's helping, except I bet you each paragraph is heading, but it needs to be a normal text. So this whole section needs to be uh, n normalized instead of whatever. But again, this is the text I'm hoping you will take out of the, the document and make a link uh, you know, to it uh, elsewhere. So does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. That will yeah. that will structure the document a lot more than, than it is now. You know, I, I was just, I haven't worked with, with these software in such a long time i was really unaware of of this function and i've been i've been aware that i need to have some kind of organization in the dark so Good. thank you it was helpful that'll work great um i should shibugi um shall i leave this open or shall we fold up for now hold okay. up i'm got another call to go to oh, all right thank, thank you, thank you, you gentlemen. thank you mm -hmm. Thanks. all right bye bye